Ryan with Mist Geek here, and tonight we're back at the bench looking at a variable capacitor. In the last video, I showed how you could slide uh, the plates back and forth to vary the capacitance. But what I'm experimenting with now uh, to get some experience, again, we're going with for ex experience by experiments, is switching out plates. So what I've done is I've scored this PCB uh, with my the uh, uh, saw on my Gerber tool. Not very elegant, but it worked. And I'm switching it out by simply adding it to this uh, line on the uh, uh, breadboard here, which is connected to my tester. Right now I've got just the red wire connected and this green wire connects to the plate underneath it. So just the red wire is 39 picofarad. But if I connect the white wire and add this to it, so I've got these two connected and now I've got a larger capacitor and the capacitance is now 64 picofarad. So if I add the yellow wire, I'm adding this, all three of these, and we're at 86. And if I add the orange wire, which is this far side over here, you can see it's not connected to the other board but underneath it. That's the green wire. But if I add this one, I've got 132 picofarad, which is basically as much as you can get on with this board, even if these are all connected together. So if I were to split this one more time, um, of course, this one by itself is, I think, 50 something picofarad. I think it's 57 or 56, somewhere in there. No, it's 61. Okay. So I've got 61, it's about 60 picofarad, 40, 40, 40, roughly. Um, and that gets me into the range uh, with more capacitance. If I were to add a second set of these boards here, I could get even more capacitance yet. In fact, I would really only need to, to, to cut these maybe in half um, to gain lots of capacitance because you don't, you don't need infinitely variable because you can just add, let's say if these are 130 each and let's say I cut them in half and they're about 70 or 60, let's say 60 each. If I make two of these and they're 60 each, that's 60, 60, 60, and then 40, 40, 40. And that gives me a lot of capacitance. Uh, and it's it's almost continuously variable. But if I add in this guy, I get actual continuous variable capacitance uh, within that little range. So I get this into the range that I want with some switches by switching these out. And then this is variable up in the range that I need. If I need more capacitance, I just flip another switch and then adjust this again until I get a tune. So that's that. Uh, of course, what we're doing here is we're trying to make a, an L-match antenna tuner using the things on hand or really close to it. The most expensive part of an antenna tuner is in fact the air variable, um, uh, air, air variable capacitor. And I, the cheapest one I can find is about 23 or $24. Um, pack of these PCBs you might have on hand or you could buy them for a few dollars to buy a pack of 10, um, and that makes it really cheap. And of course, I salvaged this out of an old uh, CB radio um, linear amplifier tube amp <laughs> that I bought at a garage sale for a couple bucks. So this was almost free. It's just a uh, scrap, just from looking around. You could also use a Vericon, but those, are, those won't handle any voltage. These can handle some higher voltage. If I wanted to run you know, 50 or 60 watts through it, I could. Uh, of course, then we're going to need inductors, and so in another video, I'm going to look at inductors. Uh, I've got these guys here, these T50-2s, I think, or 6s, T50-6s, and so I use these in an another one, and they worked really well, but I'm going to try to use something that maybe every ham will have, no matter if they have some, capa some uh, uh, toroids on hand or not. So maybe some uh, air wound, perhaps, I'm not really sure. Anyway, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any comments, questions, or uh, anything, please put them below. I'd sure appreciate the subscription if you're not subscribed already. And um, I think that's about it. So thanks for watching. 73. We'll see you next time.